Supposed Bible contradiction. Did Jesus cleanse the temple at the beginning or end of his ministry? In the Synoptics, we read that Jesus went up to Jerusalem and cleansed the temple the same week that he died. But in John, we read this occurred at the beginning of his ministry. Because of this, many scholars argue John moved the temple cleansing to the beginning of Jesus' ministry for theological reasons. And given the cultural context, this is a possible explanation. Ancient biographers would often organize events in a topological order instead of a chronological order. However, John adds some additional details that makes this interpretation unlikely. First, John says Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover. Then John ends this section by saying Jesus left and went to the Judean countryside. Then later we read, when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they too had gone to the feast. This verse draws back to the events that would have taken place earlier in chapter 2. John seems to be suggesting a chronological order, with a temple cleansing happening early in Jesus' ministry. He doesn't seem to be ordering his events topologically, but chronologically. Second, John records that the Jews said to Jesus, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? This is another chronological marker that fits best with the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as scholars like Harold Honer and Colin J. Humphreys note. Alan Chappell says, This results in what one study calls a surprising corroboration of the Johannine chronology. So John seems to believe Jesus did cleanse the temple early in his ministry, whereas the synoptics suggest it happens at the end. But Craig Blomberg notes the majority position of Christian writers, up until recently, has simply been that Jesus cleansed the temple twice once at the beginning and once at the end of his ministry. Alan Chapel adds that there are many scholars today who support this idea as well, and this understanding is backed by internal evidence. First, the temple cleansing episode described in John is not the same as what we see in the synoptics. Chapel highlights many differences between both accounts and notes they only share five words in common. For example, in the synoptic version, Jesus quotes Isaiah 56, 7 and Jeremiah 7, 11. But in John, the disciples remember Psalm 69, 9. In John only do we see the mention of Jesus using a whip, sheep and oxen, and the pouring out of coins. In John, Jesus uses the whip to drive out the animals. And in the synoptics, he expels the sellers and buyers. In John, he tells the pigeon sellers to leave. But in the synoptics, he prohibits anyone from carrying a vessel through the temple court. Also, the Jewish leaders immediately challenge him and demand a sign, which does not happen in the synoptic account. Instead, they take time to plot against him. Given all these differences, it makes more sense to see them as different accounts. Craig Blomberg says, The words the two accounts have in common are those one would expect in a description of an incident involving the protest of corruption in the Jerusalem temple. Even if two different events are in view, sellers, tables, doves, money changers drove out, temple and house. Otherwise, one is struck by the differences. Chapel points out that Jerusalem and Zion traditions were pivotal for Jesus' mission as the Messiah. It was ground zero for messianic fulfillment in the heart of Israel. Given this, it is unlikely Jesus would neglect Jerusalem until the very end of his ministry. John's account of Jesus spending more time in Jerusalem, in addition to preaching throughout Galilee, makes more sense with who the historical Jesus was. Moreover, it would make sense for Jesus to begin his ministry with a focus on the temple, by signaling its completion in him in the beginning of a new age. Cleansing it early on would be an appropriate way to initiate his ministry, as it would point to his main task as the Messiah. In John's account, Jesus is putting himself at the center of Israel's life, as the Messiah and the Father's Son. His words and deeds indicate that his death and resurrection will mean the end of the temple and its sacrifices, and will mark him out as the eschatological temple. All of this is said and done in an indirect and veiled way that fits an early stage in his ministry. Such an inaugural visit to Jerusalem and the temple makes a good fit with what we know of Jesus' messianic vocation and mission to Israel. Some have argued if Jesus cleansed the temple early in his ministry, 
they wouldn't have allowed him to ever return and cause another disruption. In fact, cleansing the temple was probably one of the reasons the Sanhedrin wanted him executed. So he could only have done this once in his life. But this is unlikely even according to the synoptics. In Mark, Jesus returns the very next day after cleansing the temple and continues to teach there throughout the week. It does not appear that attacking the money changers and sellers in the temple was enough to necessarily end in one's immediate arrest. It is not like Jesus attempted to storm the Holy of Holies. He only went after the merchants and money changers in the outer court. Additionally, it is insufficient to suggest the cleansing of the temple was the only reason the Jewish leaders wanted Jesus dead. Such a charge was not even brought up at his trial. Instead, the real issues were that Jesus committed blasphemy and claimed to be a king above the Jewish authorities. The triumphant entry and the parables Jesus told would have been a much greater cause of enmity for the Jewish leaders. Additionally, in the synoptics, Jesus shames the leaders in front of the people, something which would have greatly angered them. Randolph Richards and Brandon J. O'Brien say, the Jewish officials didn't kill him for going around preaching love one another, or for healing the sick, or for performing miracles. They killed him because he had taken their honor, a limited resource. None of these additional aspects occur in John's account, which also suggests it's another and earlier temple cleansing. Randolph Richards points out in John, Jesus is challenged by the Jews by demanding a sign. When he didn't provide one, he would have been shamed in the eyes of the people before the Jewish leaders. In an ancient honor-shame culture, this would have been an adequate punishment for the disruption. Moreover, the fact that Jesus left the city shortly after would have given the impression that Jesus was shamed out of Jerusalem. So there is no reason to think an earlier temple cleansing could not have occurred, which is recorded in John's Gospel. It does not necessitate Jesus could not have returned years later to do it again. Alan Chapel also notes the first temple cleansing helps us explain events in Mark. In chapter 3, we read that a group of scribes comes to Galilee to denounce Jesus and accuse him of using demonic powers. No explanation for their hostility or their presence in Galilee is given. Chapel says, This would make sense if they had encountered Jesus in Jerusalem, where he acted in ways they would have come to regard as completely intolerable. While it is possible to envisage other catalysts that might have led to this view, the temple incident reported by John fits the bill quite nicely. Previous time in Jerusalem would also count as to how Jesus was able to acquire the donkeys for the triumphant entry and the upper room for the Passover celebration. And Luke also gives us indications Jesus had already spent time in Judea and Jerusalem and was known to the people there. Later in Mark, we see Jesus is accused of claiming to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. This is not uttered in the synoptics, but it's stated in John's account. The misunderstanding is more likely to have resulted if it was something Jesus uttered a few years ago, instead of it was something he said only a mere few days ago. So an initial temple cleansing actually makes more sense with the complete timeline of Jesus' ministry, and there is nothing inconceivable about it. As Colin Humphreys says, If Jesus had cleared the temple of moneylenders in the first year of his ministry, presumably they would have moved back in again. So when Jesus visited the temple in his last week, he would have seen them there again. It seems not at all unlikely that he would drive them out again. Indeed, one could argue that it would have been inconsistent for him not to have done so. Thus, given the data and how John and Mark fit together, the most likely explanation is simply that Jesus cleansed the temple twice. John records the first time and the synoptics record the second time. Paul Anderson points out that it is likely John was supplementing the material we find in the synoptics, so he probably chose to record the first temple cleansing and leave out the second incident, since it was already recorded in the other Gospels. Additionally, there is nothing strange about similar events happening twice. History often repeats itself. The Mongols attempted to invade Japan twice, and both attempts failed due to a typhoon. France, Britain, and Russia fought two world wars against Germany. Both American presidents Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy were assassinated while in office by being shot in the back of the head. There is no reason to think Jesus could only have cleansed the temple once. John is most likely recording a separate and earlier incident, 
Thus, this supposed contradiction can be resolved.